You're listening to a Lost in the Groove segment. I can say though is there have been so many recordings where we have started with him being in the video and him snoring because when Louis snores it's like come here and it's it's so cute in person because he's just this little boxy little pug like look at this look at this guy maybe it's on YouTube you can see this snort directly into the microphone oh my god he's so cute and he is so silky that's the thing about him too like he's literally like a shiny sheen look at this you can see that look look, look at this look look, look, look at that head see that look at that sheen right over there and move the camera so i I got my little i got my little twix over here right now and she's cuddling great way to we begin Segway the episode, pets. but he's not really making that many noises. He's not. No, I wanted him to like snort like a lot. Come on. Twixie's just purring. Do like, it. Do it. Just do it, do purring. It, do, it. do it. I think you got to give him just a little more time, you know? I just wait. Mm-hmm. He's going to start. I mean, he snorts all the time. But he does it a lot like when we're sleeping. Like I would say for the most part. I don't know. Well, this little one, my little Twix was meowing the entire podcast episode. Yeah, I heard that. I know. So she very much needed a cuddle, like a very, very needed cuddle. Uh, right now she's on my um, on my thigh. My Louis has been spending a lot more time alone, but did I tell you that I got a dog walker for Louis? Oh my god, that is fantastic. Yeah, and they have a pug, so Louis gets to walk with another pug, but I feel like I already talked about this on the podcast. But I No, was that's fine. No, I, 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 I heard you talking about that, but you know, you told me it was new and you were kind of a little weary. How's that been going? Really good. Yeah, I'm excited about it. And I think it's been really good for him to like have something to do. Like a new friend. He hasn't really had as much like doggy social time as he used to have in California. Yeah, because he's good at the dog park. I remember. And this little guy. He doesn't go anymore. He, the dogs that ran the fastest at the park became his best friend. Because all they did was just run a hundred miles an hour in circles, literally yeah, circles. He would get all the dogs like running in a big circle and he would like chase and they would chase him. And it just, he would create chaos sometimes. In Look at the that. Dog it, park. Yeah. Do you see it? Yes. And then he's so dark. And when he opens his mouth, it's just like so cute. Oh. God. Yeah. Well, um, I, as you, I don't know if anybody knows this. I got Louie a red bandana. I live out here in South Florida yeah. and we have the guitar hotel from the hard rock and they had yeah, a red bandana. It. You have it. Okay. Absolutely. Ba- he had it on the other day. Okay. Keep telling your story. Oh my, yeah. So basically I went there with my, basically my brother came out from California around Christmas time. So I came over there to see my brother. My mom was there too. And when we were there, I noticed that they had these red bandanas and they were really cool. Like it said hard rock, you know, on them. And I'm like, I'm a sucker sometimes for memorabilia. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's really like, if you ever have an opportunity to come down here to South Florida and come to Hollywood, I would definitely tell you to check out um, the hard rock. It is absolutely fantastic and (laughs) so i go ahead and i purchased this red bandana and i sent it i sent it over i shipped it out to carissa and 
Carissa got the bandana. She never told me that she got it. Like, I, I literally found out that Carissa had <laughs> the bandana like a week or two later. So she sends me a message about like a week and a half after that with Louis wearing the bandana. And oh my God, not only like he looks so cute, he's just like the type of dog that if you put... <sighs> Red. Oh, I can't find it. Damn it. I spent all that time and I can't even find it. Oh, no. But I he was wearing it. He had it yes. on. And maybe I took it off in the car or something. But I remember it got like tangled up with his harness. But it's absolutely adorable. Well, there's this a picture. Like hard rock. There's yeah. a picture. What I can do is I can definitely, if you don't mind, I can share the picture. And I can leave it down in the description so people can did check I it out. Did I send it to you? I sent it yes, to you, Yes, right? you did. Yeah, because mm -hmm. he had it on in the car. We went to the Starbucks the other day. Look at this. I got him a raincoat. Oh, my God. That is adorable. Oh, my God. Turn That's that around. Little... Let me see. Oh, is that gold? No, like it's gold, red. Like gold, gold and red? Wait, let me see. Is that white and red or gold and red? White and red. White and, and red. Ooh. It's got, like, little veggies on it. And oh, my God. That is adorable. It has, like, this little, like. Plastic hood. Yeah. And so we'll see what Louie so looks like. Cute. He's so cute in this. I'm sorry I'm being like such a ridiculous dog mom right now, but I'm not. No. Sorry. I, I literally live for this moment. I mean, we're both I mean, we literally did an episode about this. Like we literally are pet people. But the bet like the coolest thing I, I can say for myself personally is Twixie Twixie likes him. Louie? Okay. No, Twix. Twix likes him. So Oh that, yeah, yeah. So that in and itself was like, oh my god. Oh my god. You're killing me over here. You're killing me over here. That is Oh my god, he's so cute. Oh my god, he's so cute. <gasps> Okay, I am literally having a cute moment right now. Oh my god. Can you imagine if he had little boots? Oh, he hates little boots. He, he hates, hates little boots? Yeah, he absolutely hates little boots. He won't walk in them. Now he's making a lot of noise. <laughs> Look at us being a bunch of fucking stoners and weirdos with our pets. Putting on raincoats. Having one resting her leg in between my dick and... And my balls. He won't go out. I'm not just a weirdo who's like buying clothes. He won't go out in the rain. He's really, really afraid of the rain. He absolutely hates the way it feels. And so he. I thought, you know, getting him a raincoat might kind of help, you know. Mm. And he does like he had a raincoat, but he's outgrown it. So that's why we got a new raincoat. But I was going to see if I could get, I mean, this raincoat like fits like his upper body, but it's like too long for his body. Like, look at this. So like it fits him up here, but then like, I'm going to pick him up. Look how long it is. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, once he stands up, it like, it, it covers his stuff. And so like. He covers can't go his to the junk. Bathroom. Covers his junk. Woo! But I, I'm wondering, like, how short it would need to be. Oh my god! And then this... I'm like, am I gonna cut it and hem it, or like, how am I gonna do that? Like, well, you know the 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 number one thing that I've like experienced the most is the fact that she controls more my life than I control my own life, okay? She decides when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> she decides when I go to sleep at night. And I, and I mean that genuinely. <laughs> because, like, she's always under my bed when I'm going to sleep. And every morning she's on my bed, you know? So it's like, it's not necessarily even about having a pet. It's like, 
we're you're alone, but you're not alone. Like there's always something there. And you know what it is. She's kind of like my comfort place. It's like I want to take this. See how long it is. Oh my god, are you still on with the raincoat? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I want to take it like to a seamstress. And oh my like, god. Can you fix this raincoat? Because I just, I just don't know if I can do as good of a job as I need to. I don't know. The raincoat doesn't fit. I should just take it back. Okay. <laughs> listen to me, dog mama. And listen carefully. Keep the raincoat. Or not keep the raincoat. Make up your mind. <laughs> oh my god. Ah! I am a crazy dog mom right now. You are a know. crazy dog mom. I mean, yeah, literally, it's we've how been... I entertain myself. Like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> makes me happy. I know it does. People be like, that girl... She She's just let that dog make herself happy. It's like, yeah, I did. Yeah, it is. I mean, I I tend to believe that, you know, there's always there's always so much you can get out of life. But the thing about pets in particular, they don't really necessarily have a sense of purpose, except the sense of purpose that you give them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you give them an opportunity to, like, survive and live and, like, get hmm. cared for and... Well, you rescued yours. They bond with you regardless. There, there's, like, this bonding thing that happens between owners and pets. It's undeniable. I just feel bad for Louie because he's, like, alone a lot. But he did get that dog walker, so, like, he's good. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, you make, like, a really, really good bond with your animal. I know, I mean, it's so healing for so many people. But your Twixie's really special. I got she... you... Mm. I think I told you, right? I got you an egg. It's like, but it's, you know how they make those, like, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup eggs for, like, Easter? I heard they were making now Snickers Easter eggs. Yeah, well, they made a Twix Easter egg. Bless the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, my I, God. That is fucking amazing. I thought you might, like, really enjoy, like, some Easter, like, candy because, like, you don't always celebrate Easter. You I know? mean, I'm dating a Catholic, so I might have to start to learn some of this stuff. Oh, did you know he fill saying? you in about, like, w what is happening? This is, like, kind of like a, a time right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start asking him questions, you know? I'm going to be like, hey, 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 can you tell me some things about what Catholics do around Easter? <laughs> well, like, being gay was accepted in the Catholic Church, I thought, right? I was could it? I totally wrong. Maybe I'm still oh totally my God. wrong, no, but I... Let me, okay, I'm going to actually There's check There's a lot this. of different things that they did, like, modify recently. Like, they're always, like, updating things. Is it, I'm, like, totally full of shit. I'm, like, wrong. I wouldn't be surprised. But I kind of thought, I guess I could be wrong. No, actually, this is Stance of Faith on LGBTQ plus issues, Roman Catholic Church. Okay, the Roman Catholic Church is the largest. The Roman Catholic Church, largest Christian denomination in the United States, and SMA, okay, has welcomed and has welcomed celibate gay and lesbian people into its church life, but increasingly is becoming more intolerant even of this population. Celibate? At C E L I B A T E. I'm going to Google that now. As in, like, <laughs> you could be gay, but you can't have sex? Abstaining from marriage and sexual relations. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is kind of odd. You can be gay, but do not use your penis <laughs> or vagine. If He's you like, use you your gay, penis but... over your vagine, you're in trouble. <laughs> you can yeah. be gay, but don't don't be gay. I can't. I mean, that says specifically with Roman Catholics. I, I, I don't know. 
I'm, I'm reading it off of like humanrights.org. So they might just have like shit shoved up their ass or something. You know, they might have had I a mean, coworker like shove up the shit for them. Sounds kind of gay. <laughs> Very gay. <laughs> Maybe in a good way. <laughs> Maybe in a really good way. I mean, they're like they're saying celibate, but I'm like, hey. It sounds like a secret. Well, I'm not, I, uh, to be honest, like, I'm not too particular. <laughs> what are we talking about here? <laughs> because, like, I, the thing about over here is, like, as a Jewish person, like, there is, there is no if, and, or buts with, with Orthodox Jews. Like, Judaism is not, ex- mm-hmm. like, they do not accept it. It's like, but the, but Nana's things is, like, lesbians have been starting to be accepted. And is it okay for them to kind have of. sex? Yeah, or, kind or, of. Or yeah. is it okay, like, like you guys can be lesbian, but you're not allowed to have sex? <laughs> so ridiculous. You know the people who will say that lesbians can't have sex? It's so funny oh, to me. Oh, my God. Get off but your high horn. People like, will really... I, cause, I'm cause, in the land of Iowa, and, like, Iowa, like... You wouldn't believe the things people say around here. Like, I'm just like. Okay. It's like one of those things is like, like, you can say the same thing about gay people, right? Like, how do we have sex? No, oh, that's, that's fucking. That's like anal. You know <laughs> what I mean? I've never seen it. <laughs> but there it's, is, but there is a that's way. sex. <laughs> like, but there is a way of having sex. Without. It's without, happening. When two people grind and hump the fuck out of each other, they're they're fucking. They're fucking. Yeah. People are. I mean. Yeah. There's a level of intensity that is happening. It's called fucking. Yeah. There's also <laughs> there's also sensitive spots. <laughs> there is like there are like and the thing about <laughs> the thing about it in the end of the day is is that. Being gay. David's quiet. He was like, and that's all I'm going to say about the sensitive spots. Oh, I'm not. No, I'm going to. Okay. He's honestly, like moving on. He's like. <laughs> no, like, honestly, there are, spot, there are spots that you can give orgasms. Yep. <laughs> and like this idea of that anal or, for example, vaginal sex, for example, is like the only ways that a person can be pleasured is very much a myth. Yeah, but would it be called sex is like a a thing. P- people are very surprised to know that having sex actually is literally being nude with your partner. That so is I a wonder, form of like that is a form of sex, believe it or not. It's not though because like there's a lot of people who have been nude with their partner a lot who haven't had sex yet. Like it happens. Uh, what I, what I mean specifically, ba- uh, like, I, I mean, like you're, you're nude and you're like, you're like in that moment with that person. I mean, the, if the, the Catholic the- church doesn't acknowledge what two women do together as sex, then it would be pretty easy to work within their rules. <sighs> <laughs> because they say that you can't have sex, but then maybe they don't even call what you're doing sex, which this is, it's- I mean, to me, let's stop <laughs> with all the little details. Like, you know, how's your relationship with God? You know, there's the important part. Right. So, but I'm just saying like, you know, I mean, it might actually work out for you if you want to be a Catholic lesbian, <laughs> if, because it's incredibly <laughs> offensive, though. Like, I don't, I can shouldn't be. say what you think, but I would be offended. <laughs> it can be. And the thing also is, is that we're on the flip side. When you deal with people that are transgender, right? There is this, there is this per se ideology of crisscrossing lesbians and gays, which, by the way, lesbians and gays are not the same thing. I'm going to say that right right now. We are completely two different mm. species. There's like a big umbrella of just gay. Mm-hmm. But then there's like all these other things too. Yes. And then the, you could also use the word gay 
for like a specific part too. Yes. Yeah. So there's there's a lot that, that there's a lot that goes into it, and the same thing applies with when you put lesbians, gays, and transgender into the same box. You can't, because people that are that are transgender go through very different experiences than gay and lesbian people at whole. Sometimes more difficult at times for gay and lesbian people. So that being said, it's like being able to get out of the jack in the box, right? You know, and being able to like understand that there are differences. The same way of having a sexual or romantic relationship with somebody is not necessarily always anal or vaginal sex. That's it. Plain and simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're going to include all that. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, like, the thing is, that's just one part of it. There, Like, I'm going to be honest. There are things that I feel as a gay man that I can experience that heterosexual couples cannot experience. It's just different stuff. Disregarding the whole, like, sexual... There are things that we can experience that heterosexual couples probably won't experience because you're dealing with something completely, not completely different. Something you're dealing with, not indifference, but in a level diversity or diversifying of people, people experiencing relationships differently. Yeah, I I don't think there's anything wrong with comparing. I just think it's more cuz I feel like you shouldn't compare people, but it's like there's Sometimes nothing wrong. Have to. The thing is is you have to look let's say you're looking at two men that are in a relationship and a man and a woman that are in a relationship and that's our two comparisons, but what you should really be looking at is for individual people, you know? And it's like those two gay people are never going to have the same relationship as two other gay men. Correct. Like they're still just two completely different people over again in the same way that the other couple is just two completely different people. I mean, I've, been a woman and been in completely different relationships (laughs) you know i mean like it's just it's different every single time with everybody i mean i've been a woman in a relationship with a woman and it's different and right you know it's just it's where it really comes down to its most simplest form i feel which is this idea of gay, lesbian, trans, hetero. These are all terms. People Some of get us so f- mad. People I, get. Oh, I know they get so fucking mad. And it's like, you know what? In the end of the day, you got to be you, you know, and you got to be the best version of you. And if people can't accept that. I, I don't really see why they should be in your life. Like, I, I don't really see any reason to have anybody in my life that doesn't really tells me straight up to my face that I don't like you being gay. Like, if I have somebody in my life saying that, I'm like, okay, bitch, have a great day. Like, we're not, this is, this is not, no. Well, with how not. tough life is, like, yeah. how, how much struggle it takes just to survive, keep your head above water, it's like, I, I like, I don't know what it's like, obviously, but I can imagine that if I were trans, I would be like, you know, don't fuck with me. Like the same way that I am right now, where it's like, gosh, you know, like I know who I am and it's like, I bust my ass like all over the place and I've got way more to deal with. I deserve to be respected just like anybody else, you know, like it's just like I you're out there like I don't have time for anything but to be treated the same as as other people like it's like i i'm still busting my ass like everyone else still keeping my head above water what difference does it make like you know i i just feel like we have a lot to look 
past. Like, you know, just because like we need to survive. Like, right. it's like, I don't, it's unfortunate, you know, that it, it becomes that simplified, but I do, I think it's just like, you know, I mean, like, look like when you go to judge somebody, like think, you know, like, well, are they, you know, are they putting in their 40 hours every week? Like, are, are they doing their things? Like, are they picking up after themselves? You know, like, it's like, what, what kind of human are they? You know, I know. Like, do they contribute? Do they care about the people? Do, do they just, you know, they hit a car and drive away from it? And then, Fuck you. Like, what kind of human are they? <laughs> I don't well, know. It really just comes down to is that the most important aspect of your life that should be fixated at all times? The answer is no. It, I know. it, it we, we, you decide to do in a relationship is your decision, whether it be your same gender or not your gender or somebody that is, I guess the term is genderless. I, who knows? Again, it's in the end, end of the day, you know, this is what I struggled with the most is how do you expect me to live my life based on rules that I didn't choose to have a part of my life? You told me to choose these. You're well, telling I mean, me like the to religious, do this. Religious stuff? Yes. And like how you're not supposed to be gay. You know, and, and like the answer is clearly, well, this can be cured. So it's now like some kind of fucking cancer. It's not. It yeah, is, yeah. It's it's insane. It's it's fucking. I I don't get it. I don't. I don't get fucking... it either. I don't know why it's important. Like, I really have no idea. There must have been something at the time because, like, it's just. I mean, it's been around for hundreds of thousands of years that people thousands. are the same. Th I mean, there's even scriptures in Egyptian hieroglyphics. I know. So I just, I don't know why it's been rejected and, and thought of in that kind of way forever. Like, I have a theory. Yeah. I mean, you probably have thought about it. I think it has a lot to do with oppression because the more that you can oppress people, the more that you can take and fixate. You know, the same way that they've created the, the fake the fake color wars, you know, this whole idea of we need to diversify. Honey, I come from an interracial background. Do you know how many people I know come from interracial backgrounds? Too many to count on my little fingers. Like, it's insane. The, the, it, we're already doing all this shit. We as people have already been doing all the things that we've been saying that we should have changed because we've already changed them. Like mm -hmm. we live in a time, especially in this country where being gay is less of a crime and more accepted than ever. Like, for example, if you assault a gay man, you will get arrested. Can you believe it? Yeah. There's Nuts. still a lot there, of, there still is bias and hate amongst people like they're it's still there like i don't know it uh, it surprises me i think living in california for a long time i was away from this very narrow-minded way of thinking i mean they all had their own narrow-minded way of thinking too sometimes too you know it was just different i wouldn't say that you know californians are open-minded they just happen to think in a different way than people do here i i don't know but i i'll tell you that the racism is real and the hate is real like it's it's been a long time since i've seen it and it's just like weird. And I think it's because it's just a bunch of people around a bunch of the same people. But I mean, I've seen a lot of people who are around a bunch of the same people that aren't racist and they're all just not a big group of racist people. I don't know. It's like it infects like little areas or it carries down it, little family lines or it's what you want to it's, it's what you weird it's what you want to listen to because you know 
I think the the best way to be yourself is to surround yourself with not only supportive people, but people that you know that will have your back or vice versa. You know, having that that ability and stability, like, for example, me, like I said before, me having a friend that is homophobic and racist, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, <laughs> I, I can try to, like, talk to them and explain to them the problems of the way that they're talking, but am I to say to change their mindset and thinking? No. They choose to have that same mindset and thinking. I have to make a choice. Do I stay friends with this person or I choose not to? It's very simple, cut and dry. You know, you have so much control at your fingertips as to what you want to choose. You know, this like lazy attitude of like, ugh, well, do, do you even know what you're talking about? You know what I'm saying? That's kind of how it feels. Because if you truthfully know how it feels, I genuinely feel you wouldn't be thinking that way. That's how I feel. But it takes, like, explaining yourself, you know, like, explaining your side of things, like, and it takes the For other sure. person, like, hearing it. Because I feel like there's, yeah, there, there's no way that anybody would understand what life is like for someone else. I think a lot of people are, like, in, like, a little comfort zone. They don't ever have to leave. Um, they don't ever have to be out of their little zone and so they can just hate everything that isn't their little circle <laughs> and it's like you know I have a, amazing that they have such little comfort space I see that in a lot of different areas you know you see that in Orange County you got all those people all up in there you mean the conservatives you can say it I just just saying like it happens in poverty and it happens in money and it's like it's really not any different like to be honest but i i don't only see it in the conservatives i mean the level of hate that circulates within the liberal situation mm -hmm. is really really powerful I told you, like, I, I generally myself, I do see myself as a conservative, but it, it, uh, I can't like do either one. No, I don't either. But I, I, I see myself as somebody that is kind of more traditional in that way. But at the same time, I, I do have more of a progressive type of thinking where it's great to live in the past. I kind of like mesmerizing and reminiscing, too. But don't bring that shit to 2024. <laughs> Just don't. That's all I'm asking. Just don't bring that crap now. Like, I need to definitely let go of some past. I feel like I could I could purge like some shit. You know, it sucks. I, I have to drive past the funeral home. That my my grandma and grandpa's funeral was at um, every day, and it really just is the fastest way to get home. And I could choose different routes, but for some reason I just choose that one. I wonder if tomorrow I'll just pick a different one. But it really is like the most quiet, fastest back street way to get home. Like it's direct. It is like a crazy little shortcut. And then I just think to myself, like, is there a reason that grandma's funeral home is like right on it? Like that I drive past it every single day. It's just like weird. It's almost like it's almost like a message, you know, where. There is something. There is something about uh, specifically when people pass. Because they're no longer here. You can never talk to them. You can never interact with them. They, like, they're gone, gone. But in a way, they, they kind of stay by. There's little pieces of them that are kind of scattered around. And sometimes they're a funeral home on the way home. For me, it's finding a pair of glasses that I, that I kept of my dad. 
that I recently just found. It's the things that they teach you. Mm -hmm. Like when you're going through stuff, the things that they told you like pop up. It's like, oh, I don't know. Like Joan, Joan's like a grandma, my therapist who like passed away. And I mean, she's the one who told me half the things I tell you. So it's like she's always alive, you know, because like the things that she did and told me helped me make changes in my life that are like living, you know. And you were able to pass those things over. Yeah. I think it's, it. What? Mirror. I don't know. I, I, I think maybe it's just because I'm getting older. My parents are older. Like it's like, you know, it really, really fucking sucks. Like this whole aging thing. Like, I just, I can't. I mean, you've been I aging feel like gracefully. I've, I'm just saying. I feel like I've overcome a lot of pain in my life, but I have absolutely no way to begin with that kind of loss like yeah i don't it, know it's it's something that i don't i don't wish to put on anyone it's very painful i mean the the hardest thing for me is is that my dad died without me having the ability of showing him my life from a different perspective you know showing him that the that I can have a good life regardless of me being gay and non-religious. He may not have accepted it, but that's fine. I could have at least had the opportunity to be like, hey, you know. But I don't get that opportunity. Ever. So the way I deal with it is like this. Death is a terrible thing, but it doesn't limit me. It means that I may not get that opportunity or possibility, but there are other things that he has given me that I can definitely use. No, you know, it's so sad. I'm sorry. I mean, on a happier note, I am an exact replica of my dad, except he's four shades darker than I am. I don't so. know. You're a lot cuter than your dad. I never saw what your dad looked like at your age, but. um, I can send you a picture. We look exactly the same. So. <laughs> Speaking of, I love this V. I love this sweater. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean this I put on this tank top. What does like it say? Oh, MTV. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I got this for three dollars. <laughs> that is such a crazy steal. Mm-hmm. I get a I lot of my clothes from this was five dollars. Wow. Mm -hmm. Dude, there's a store out here that's like a secondhand store, and it's called like Stuff. It's like called the, Stuff, like S T U F F. That is the name of the store, and I like nearly cried when I went in there. I was like, they have the biggest selection of secondhand clothes that I have maybe ever seen, and it was like so categorized and like color coded, and I was like. Uh, I was like, oh, I'm going to spend $200. <laughs> like, I was like, no. And I was like, you can't, you can't buy anything. And I was like, if you ever need anything, you come back here. Right now, you don't just buy a ton of things that you don't know if you need or not. Get out of here while you still can. <laughs> It was a beautiful secondhand store. I'll take you there if you ever come here. I didn't look at the guy's section, but I imagine it's great. I am <laughs> just so in awe right now. I'm actually looking at plane tickets to Iowa. <sighs> oh, my okay. God. Oh, my God. It is cheap enough for me to afford this. All right. Guys, what? this has been a great podcast. I love y'all. I'm going to be on a plane in a few hours. I'll see you in Des Moines. It's been oh great. Oh, my God. I'll put you to work at the bridal store. Oh, my God. Hey, y'all. All right. I got the cutest gal for you, and I got this color that's going to be beautiful for the bride. No, it'd be terrible. I would be stoned out of my fucking <laughs> mind. I'd need, like, 13 coffees. I'd be like, Katrina! 
Katrina, where is my fucking Katrina, pad? Katrina, Katrina, Katrina. <laughs> I am actually Aww. surprised. It is really cheap to go to Katrina. Iowa from here. Damn. Um, is it Allegiant? Is that what's going on? Yes. Yeah. Do they, do they suck? Do they suck balls? It's probably the suckiest there is, but that doesn't mean that it's terrible. Okay, that doesn't really make me feel better, honey. It's okay. You know, it was like tight. Pretty shitty. But okay. it wasn't like horrible. Okay. But you you you, know, you you you've taken them before. I'm 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 I'm, I'm assuming... telling you the truth. I'm not going to tell you it's okay. I mean, like this is this is coming from experience, you know what I mean? Like this is coming from like Caris saying how she feels. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I got you. Okay. Like these almonds. L like those almonds. Okay. Honey roasted almonds covered in sugar. <laughs> Honey, I can't with you. Same. I suggest these. Suggest almonds? Honey roasted. Oh, Damn honey. Good. Excuse me. Honey roasted almonds. This brand. In this bag, I've had other honey roasted almonds. They don't taste this good. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. That's uh, what I named my, my thing today. Was Shut up. <laughs> all right. Listen. Listen. Okay. Listen. I'm listening. <sighs> I I am kind of tired of the vegans at this point in my life. So Is that why you're mad at my almonds? A little Just bit. Because they remind me of the vegans? They remind me of the vegans. I'm not a vegan. I know you're not a vegan, but they remind me of the vegans. Because the amount of wildlife that has been destroyed by growing avocados and almonds is nuts. But at the same time, almonds are fucking delicious. Keep doing a great job. Just keep making them. Because well, I want yeah, almonds. The almonds are bad for but the But they're drought. delicious. Yeah. But what, what happens with the uh, avocados? I think What's... something in the neighborhood of like 19,000 squirrels are killed to grow avocados. Why? Because of all the pesticides that they use. Huh. And fertilizer. So people who eat a lot of avocados are squirrel killers now, huh? Yeah. So people thinking that they're vegan and they're saving wildlife, you're not. You're murdering innocent squirrels. Wow. This is yeah. like woke on top of woke. Yeah, pretty much. Like this is anti-woke on top of woke. This is like anarchy at its coldest. Not finest, coldest. Is this like what's on Reddit right now? Possibly. But like when on Reddit right now, there'll be like some... You know, account like two taps away dot LLL, you know, that like posts something like this. You know, did you know? And that's like a picture of a squirrel, you know, with the number 19,000 and then like an axe, like a definitely like stitched in photoshopped axe, you know? I think that, you know, if someone's like a vegan and you find like a squirrel on the side of the road, you should just throw it on their doorstep. <laughs> Yeah, like you should like spray paint like the peace sign on it first before you throw it at their house, you know, or you like you spray paint their like door or something. <laughs> I'm not actually suggesting this. I'm just no, 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 jokes. no, no. God forbid. No, no. We, we we would do this ourselves before anybody had the chance. You think of vegans that are listening are very offended? Like, fuck the vegans. I think some of the vegans have to do it like for their own like health, like. I have a friend That's who like, really needed to like cut it out. And I feel bad because those vegans like they don't deserve like all the vegan hate. Because okay. they're not doing it as like an ego thing. All you know? humans need protein. This is a fact. Proven. You only need protein to survive. Dude, there's this one dude that I ran into that was so obsessed with like vegan stuff. And he like went on and on and on about how like you do not need any meat at all and you can get like 
absolutely everything that you need from like, and I wish that I remember what he was saying. He, I'm he really did. glad that I forgot, but he had this like, anyone who would listen, this guy would try so hard to like convince them into being a vegan like him. His dogs are on all vegan diets. It's just like so over the top. I heard him at the dog park like a million times. The thing is you can you can get protein from other sources, but there are people that have problems digesting proteins, specifically meats and things of that nature. So being on a vegan diet can be very beneficial if you run into those problems. But generally speaking, we as humans are omnivores. We're not herbivores. So we know this based on our enamel and of our teeth, that we have a mixture of carnivore and herbivore teeth. Why did our evolution, why were we designed like this? It's because of the type of food that we process. So I'm just on, saying, like, yeah. you can run into people who will argue back with you like these like full fledged foolproof stories that they like a hundred percent will feed you and make you believe. I mean, it's just foolproof, no plot holes, no fucking nothing. And they will like make you believe that human beings do not need meat. Like, and they, I mean, they just like, they'll go back to like the evolution of time and be like, this is why. And they've got it all like, I mean, I it's absolutely insane. Like it's the amount of, the it's of effort the and and the persuasion that happens there is just fucking nuts. It's, it's nuts. It really. And then it, it, there was like this video that was going around on the internet that turned like a million people vegan or like vegetarian. It was like insane. Like I agree. If, if people watched that video, they were like vegetarian for at least like a month or two because <laughs> it was so terrible to watch it. Well, the thing about industrial farming is is that it is bad for the environment. It is bad for the animals. I'm not one of those people that are going to say like, you know, I know. I, I'm like one of those people that if there's a, a, a farmer out there or somebody that owns a ranch that actually cares about his animals and slaughters them properly, I would preferably buy meat from them than anybody else. But if you could afford it. If, right, exactly. And Not if, you specifically, but I'm just saying like that kind of stuff is like so unaffordable these days. Because of how much it's limited. I mean, the fact is that <clears throat> it's not the way that of like the foods you're eating. It's the foods that we're consuming. Because a lot of things are not necessarily like our process. But on top of all of that, it's where pesticides and fertilizers, they're not good for you. You know what I mean? And having... Meats that are, for example, that are not necessarily on the healthiest diet and are from an industrial farm are not necessarily the healthiest meats. They could be healthier. So it's just like a matter like there's always a flip side of always looking at things because you're vegan, right? But you're eating all the vegetables that are full of pesticides. Oh, they're organic. Doesn't matter. It goes through a similar process. They Dude. Organic people, basically is just organic pesticides and fertilizers. That's that's what organic is. People used to be like, well, with the orange, like the rind is like thick enough that like the pesticides like no. won't penetrate. It's like it's in the soil that it grew out of. It's within it. Like it's y yes. it's within it. It's not just sprayed on the outside of it. Like it's like. Oh, oh just the, and the fact that it's like genetically modified has made it so different like and i'm sorry yeah they can say that something is like not genetically modified but like how did they get it where did it come from it's yeah, so most, long ago yeah you're right most fruits and vegetables today are genetically modified a lot of the times they'll have scientists that will work on petri dishes to remove different cells from different vegetables to allow them to grow the, the ways that we eat them, you know, and it's just a fact of life. Like our food has been designed to be the way that it is. And I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing. I mean, 
We have access to more food than people had over a hundred years ago. So, you know, yes, like know. there is a still problem of homelessness and starvation, but there's still a way of people accessing food a lot better than they could over a hundred years ago. We just have to get better. Yeah. We just have to be better at making the food, you know, and realizing that like, I think like a little, little community, like, People need to do stuff within their own community, mm -hmm. like little things. And if everybody was doing stuff within their own community, like that's where the improvement comes. Like my church, the one that I used to go to in California that I still listen to, that I still donate to, they feed like two to 500, maybe even more uh, homeless people every single Saturday. They, like, do, like, a whole burrito drive, and they, like, feed, like, tons of people. Um, they also did, like, a giant shoe drive, and they feed tons of people. I mean, that's the only way you're actually going to help with that kind of shit. Like, standing around, posting shit on Reddit, bitching, being woke as fuck, you know, clang, clang, clang. Be a part of your community. I mean, like, the end of the day, it's... Where you choose to be, where you choose your life to be, right? Like, I live out here in South Florida. There's a lot of great things here that are local. That you can get here locally, you know, that are made here. And you're right. You can bitch and complain about everything else. But in the end of the day, it's like, where, where do you want to put yourself? You know, I, I look, I'm one of those people, I don't appreciate what, industrial farming has done i don't imp i like look i work in the food industry and i can tell you that there are definite negative health effects to all of the things that we have done to our food but we still have to live our lives i get to make the choices of what kind of foods that i eat right you get to make the choices of the food that you want to eat and there are plenty of people that relate to how we feel so it's just a matter of like getting out of your head and realizing, look, it's okay eating meat. I understand it's not the greatest, but when you have the opportunity, you can find somebody really cool that like is local, check it out, see it out, you know, see the experience. Like you find like a local winery or something, you know, like, okay, this is cool. This is wine that's made here. Let me try this. Let me experience this. Oh, there's local, there's local beekeepers. Do they make honey? Oh my God. They have over, out, out over here, it's called Palmetto Honey. Because mm -hmm. they have a plant that's called palmetto that grows here, and the bees basically pollinate them, and it's it's amazing, and it's local. So I'm sounding like a fucking hippie and a hipster at the same time, but I don't care. Because guess what? I'm trying what? to think of like stuff that I buy the most, and like if I could get it locally, like I don't know. I drink a lot of soda. It's like I'm never gonna figure that one out, but. I feel like, you know, I drink a lot of coffee. I could try and switch that over to something local, but like for the most part, they're all kind of like chains. I don't know, but I do. I I would say yeah, that helps the community. Like spending your money at the community. I don't know. Like, are, are any of the Starbucks like? Are they franchises or are they? Some of them are. Well, primarily. So actually getting into this, if you want to, a lot of restaurants are owned by restaurant management groups that will usually sometimes own like three to four hundred restaurants. Even some local places. So generally, like with I believe with Starbucks, there are like different districts of the franchise. But yeah, it's 100 percent corporate. Yeah, I just wondered if like it's owned by somebody who like lives around there or not. Well, they probably have, like, a regional manager, if you know what that is. Yeah, but they don't make nearly as much money as they should with a company like that. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes they make a shitload of money. Hmm. Not as much as they should. Hi, Twixie. She's being a little pain in the butt <laughs> right now because she wants she. to be walked. And we've been, like, oh. talking for almost an hour. I know. I think we've concluded an episode of american groove again this time is 50 minutes ladies and gents <laughs> thank you for listening 
We talked about a lot of interesting stuff today. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> did we? I definitely smoked a little bit more weed. You know, I got oh, yeah. my, my vapey pen this time around. <laughs> You know, got I was the, already high. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> uh, well, the crazy thing is, is that when you're high, I think you get even more high. You just enter another world. And as they say, you've gone to the Twilight Zone. I, I had to add that somewhere in this episode, so I decided to do it now. Why? I have no idea, but I did. The danger zone. The danger zone. The danger zone. So, uh, Carissa, where can these motherfuckers find you? On Instagram. At? Carissa the Beautiful. And American Groove Pod. Or American Groove. I don't know. It's one of those. I don't really care. You know, you'll, you'll figure that out. You know, if you want to send her a message and, like, rant, you know how to do it. You have to find her. So... <laughs> If you want to check out more of the podcast, you can find us on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. At YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. My favorite. A Lost in the Groove pod. So, we love you all, but we're fucking tired and want to get the hell out of here. Yeah, so. I want to go, like, eat a bunch of uh, Ben and Jerry's half-baked ice cream. That's yeah, what I'm going to so, go do. Yeah, there. exactly. So, peace out, motherfuckers. Please. Peace. All right, I'm, I'm stopping this. We're all about the artist. That is the whole purpose of this podcast, period. And you have a really valuable tool. You can share this with artists, people that are creative, someone that can... Uh, enjoy this podcast and really enjoy the experience of Lost in the Groove. So, with that, let's jump back to today's episode, shall we? Hey, it's Dave, and I quickly just wanted to jump in and say if you've been enjoying the podcast, I'm enjoying this episode. If you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, I'll be so greatly appreciated. Because here's the thing someone might read that review and make the choice if they want to listen to the podcast. You get to help grow this podcast with us. How fucking cool is that? Let's jump back to today's episode.